2018 is a milestone year for endangered Mexican wolves. 2018 is a big milestone. It marks the uh, 20th year since our anniversary of releasing Wolves to the Wild in 1998. 20 years ago in Arizona's White Mountains, Secretary of the Interior Bruce Babbitt helped release Mexican wolves that were raised in captivity. 11 were released in, a, in March of 1998, and we released two more that, in that same year, so 13 total in 1998. It was a huge first step in a long, complicated process to bring Mexican wolves back from the brink of extinction. In the late 1800s and through much of the 20th century, there was a government-backed effort to exterminate wolves so ranchers could raise livestock without wolf-caused depredation. That changed in the 1970s with the Endangered Species Act. Wolves belong on the landscape and, and we as stewards of, of the native wildlife in Arizona are working hard to bring them back. This is a wolf that's been darted with an immobilization drug. For two decades, Arizona Game and Fish has been helping the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and its partners reestablish a wild population of Mexican wolves in eastern Arizona and western New Mexico. If we can catch them in any of this stuff, it's open enough to work. Mm -hmm. So they're right here, so we've got the primitive boundary. Each year, they use helicopters to count and capture wolves. The reason for, for capturing these animals is to deploy a GPS collar on that animal, either an uncollared animal that gets a new collar or an animal that's, that has a failed collar, and we're putting a, a working GPS collar back on that animal. These satellite collars are the key to finding, managing, and monitoring wolves in the wild. At the end of 2017, the minimum count of wolves in Arizona and New Mexico in the wild is 114. No, not a big change from, from 2016, which was 113. Um, but overall, um, we, we are pleased to see that in the last 10 years, we've seen a steady trajectory in an increasing population of wolves in the wild. Success came slowly. In the early years, a lot more wolves were removed from the wild for preying on livestock or getting too comfortable near people. Those problem behaviors seem to be most common in captive raised wolves that are habituated to humans. They come out with a certain naivete and they get into trouble. They get in a lot more trouble than a, a wild born wolf that's, that grows up wild in a, in a litter. Today, none of the Mexican wolves in the wild was raised in captivity. Of all the wolves that are alive in the wild right now in Arizona and New Mexico, uh, th those wolves were either born in the wild and raised wild or they were cross-fostered pups that were, were cross-fostered into wild wolf dens and then raised wild. So these are wild animals now that are in the population versus the, the adult animals that were released from captivity. Everyone grab a pup. Cross-fostering has become the preferred method of adding genetic diversity to the wild wolf population. And so cross-fostering is when you take a, an animal born in captivity that's between five and 10 days old usually, and you take it from its natal litter and you stick it in a wild den and then it's raised with that wild pack by experienced wild animals. And so you get the genetics into the wild population and you're not dealing with the naivete of a, of a captive raised wolf. So it's, it's, if we can show that we're as successful at, in that, with that method as we are with releasing adult wolves, it's a much better way to go. Still looking pretty vigorous. Infusing new genetics into the wild is critical because the entire population of Mexican wolves started out with just seven captive founders. Our wild population, each individual on average, is as related to one another as brother and sister. And so the more animals we can infuse from the captive program, the more we can dilute that. There's no evidence of, of genetic inbreeding actually causing demographic problems in the population and limiting population growth. It's really human-caused mortality that's, that's the main limiting factor in, in the recovery of Mexican wolves. Wolves aren't that difficult to recover if we just can, can get out of the way and, and reduce the human element. Sounds so simple for such a challenging project. It's a controversial project, yeah. You know, I mean, challenging um, mostly just because of the controversy. Um, wolves are, you know, really a biologically pretty easy species to recover. 
Um, the, the recovery difficulty comes with, you know, they're not, um, they're very polarizing species. People either love them or hate them. You know, where we have tolerance for the species, they tend to do well, and where we don't, they don't. That becomes a problem, especially when wolves are illegally killed. Social tolerance of the reintroduction program is key. Um, it's important for us to have an approach that takes the mandates of recovery and, it, and is balanced with the, the impacts that wolves can have on those that, that live and make their living in wolf recovery areas. Wolf biologists are making progress by working with ranchers and finding better ways to manage wolves. Different uh, techniques in trying to reduce wolf livestock conflicts, I've, that's been a big change. A lot of different education and outreach. I would say that a lot of things are different, although um, progress is really dependent on wolves surviving and breeding in the wild, and that's kind of been the biggest uh, success point for us. And finally, there's a recovery plan that now includes criteria for when Mexican wolves could be removed from the endangered species list. So we did finalize a new recovery plan in, uh, the, at the end of 2017, the first revision of that 1982 recovery plan. There's been at least three attempts to revise that recovery plan into something that included measurable and objective recovery criteria, which is what the Endangered Species Act is all about. To be considered for delisting, the plan says the wild Mexican wolf population must average at least 320 wolves in the U.S. and 200 in Mexico over eight consecutive years. I'm very optimistic about um, wolf, Mexican wolf recovery in the, in the future. We've got a great team of people that have learned a lot about recovering Mexican wolves over the last two decades, and, and we've got what looks like a well-oiled machine and a, and a population growth rate that um, really kind of spells success in the future. I think what I love most about this project is the dedicated team that we have from multiple agencies uh, to try to make this work on the landscape. I think we all recognize how difficult it can be to recover a large predator um, with the different attitudes that people have towards them. So I think I really enjoy the uh, um, the willingness for everybody to work hard, both on our team and the stakeholders that we deal with. To look at the last 20 years, um, we, we, we went from having no wolves on the landscape to now having a minimum of 114 wolves in the wild. So we have a wild population um, that is reproducing and, and it has been increasing over the last 10 years on its own. That, that is encouraging and that's successful.